Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Life is short and then you die. And when you want to feel good about that fact, you go to Larry Bubbles Brown. He yeah. will always give you wisdom. Right, Larry? Speaking of death, I just, uh, I'm listening to radio before you called. And uh, Larry King is doing some prostate commercial. It, and, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. For a week. He's been dead for a week. They were still running his prostate thing? There's, they're still running his commercials, yeah. Usually when somebody dies, you take their ads off the air immediately. You know, you don't see... You think. Well, I mean, you don't see what's-his-name from Jeopardy, Alex Trebek doing his insurance ads right now, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah, poor taste at best. Poor taste, yeah. Um... He died recently. Who is Alex Trebek? Anyway, I bet I bet he used to get that joke a lot when he would when they would uh, <laughs> you know like they would go up to him and say, "Are are you are you Alex Trebek?" And he'd go, "Probably uh, yes, I am." But that's only because you put it in the form of a question. You know. Um, Talk about a long run. That uh, he might hold a record for game shows. Well, I uh, uh, I don't know. Let me think about that. I think so. Well, you know what we do? Echo, what host had the longest running game show? Sorry, according to the last sentence is contributed. Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. Hmm. Okay. It was Alex Trebek. Jeez. See? See, isn't that amazing? Larry Bowles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, knows everything. No. Uh, <laughs> no Alex Trebek was, I, I remember seeing him doing Jeopardy in the mid-70s. So he had to uh, use yeah, mid-70s. Yeah, yeah. Before that, who was the host before that? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, what, is don't he, tell me it was, uh, wasn't Mervyn Bennett Jeopardy, right? Mervyn Bennett Jeopardy, yeah. Actually, his wife invented his wife invented Jeopardy. Uh, she oh. she they were driving along one day, and he was trying to think of a game show to do, and she said, uh, "You know, all these all these uh, places ask you to give them an answer. Why don't we have a show where you ask you have to ask a question?" And so they came up with that format of, of that they they give you the answer, you have to supply the question. Uh, and uh, that uh, that was it. And they they were driving down the road when he came up with that one. So, you know, he always used to love to tell that story too. Uh, no, it was a, a uh, who who was the first? I used to know this. See, there, there goes my mind. Was it, was it somebody well known or not? Well, wait a minute. Art Fleming. Art Fleming was the Art first Fleming. host of Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. He was the host of Jeopardy for, gee, maybe 10 years or something. Well, Echo, how long did Art Fleming host Jeopardy? Here's something I found on the web. According to Genius.com, the original host of the U.S. TV game show Jeopardy, Fleming hosted from 1964 to 1975. Okay, so we got 11 years there. Wow, you're 1960, right. Could you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, you're dripping with knowledge yourself. No, my my Alexa is. So. <laughs> well, you you said he'd been on before uh, you knew that. Yeah, but I knew it was art. I, it, when it, once I cleared my mind, I came up with the art Fleming. Yeah, thirty six. So that, that 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 show's been on for fifty six years. Well, no, because it was off for a while, and then it oh, came wow. back with Alex Trebek. You see, so. I, it was off. I, I don't know how long it was off for. Um, here, here, hold on a second. 
Echo, how long was Alex Trebek the host of Jeopardy? Here's something I found on the web. According to popculture.com, Trebek has been okay. the host of Jeopardy for 35 years, starting, starting in 1984. Starting in 1984. So what did we say was uh, the last time he, that uh, Fleming had it? Till 64? Uh, 75. No, 75 was it? I thought he said 64 to 75. 75, yeah. So, uh, 75. So it was off for about nine years. And then it came back. And uh, and Alex Trebek had it ever since, you know. Uh, So Merv probably made, probably one of the wealthiest men in Hollywood. Merv Griffin? Yes. Well, he was at one time. Then he died, and all his assets were, you know, sold to other people, other companies, and so on. I think Sony now owns Jeopardy. And, well, he, no, he sold all those shows before he died to the Coca-Cola company. And um, uh, he sold those shows, and he made a, just a bundle out of it. And it was considered the, the richest guy in Hollywood, you know. They always used to have, who was the richest guy in Hollywood? Okay, so who was the richest guy in Hollywood in the 1950s? Do you know? In the 1950s? I'm, t- I'm talking uh, about actors. I'm talking about actors now or performers. Yeah. Actors or performers? Uh, uh, I was going to say yep. John Wayne. But well, no. they used to think it was Bing Crosby. Okay. But Bing said, no, I'm just a piker compared to... Bob Hope? No. You'll never get this one. Fred McMurray. Somehow, Fred McMurray, he invested in real estate in in L.A. early. And was... Yeah, I heard he put all his money into California real estate. Very, very wealthy. Richer than Bing Crosby. Now, Bing Crosby... Boo, 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 boo. Does anybody, is there anybody in our audience remember Bing Crosby? Because they should. He was very, he was, he was maybe the most popular performer in the world. All right? Really? Uh, yeah. I just remember the name. I didn't know he was that big. Really? You, you're that young that you don't remember Bing Crosby? Well, wasn't he in the 40s? 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, he kept, he kept, he kept going. You know, you ever see the movie High Society? That was made, I think, in the 50s. Um, but anyway, uh, he uh, he invested in a lot of things. Remember Minute Maid Orange Juice? Mm-hmm. That was his. Okay, he owned that. Um, now, I'll give you one that you'll really go crazy over. So he, a guy, he's doing his radio show in L.A., and he hates doing the radio show because he's... He, he, to begin with, he always pre-recorded them. So how they would do a recording of a show in those days is they would do it on disc. But he didn't want to do it in one take. He wanted to do it in several takes. So they would make discs of all the takes, and then somebody later on would go in and take all the discs and play them one after another, making a complete show. Get me? Get what I'm saying? That's how they would do mm-hmm. a show on disc if you wanted to like edit it or whatever. There was no other way. And this guy comes to him and says, listen, set me up with a line from your show uh, to the hotel across the street. Uh, I will record your show. Then you tell me how you want it edited, and I'll have it back to you in an hour. So Crosby goes, okay, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on this. So they do that, and the guy, he then, they call the guy and say, here's what we want. We don't want this in. We want this out. We want this in. We want this out. An hour later, he comes by, and he says, I've got a recording of it. And so they go back to the hotel where there is this machine. And he had recorded the thing on magnetic tape. And uh, Crosby said, how much to buy into your company? You know, because he just he heard this thing, and it was perfect, plus the sound was better than the sound on the transcriptions. 
He, he, and the guy said, uh, he said, I want to buy into your company. And I think he bought something like, I don't know, 50% of Ampex or whatever. And this was Ampex is what it became. Ampex, okay. Yeah. And uh, he made a absolute bloody fortune off of that. Because as soon as Ampex came out with the tape recorder, all the radio stations dropped the idea of making transcriptions and everything was tape. Okay? Uh so that's how Crosby got part of the uh, the company, and he was he was the first show ever to be edited on video on audio tape. Now you want the history on how sure. they built the first tape recorder? They didn't. Sure. They didn't. The Nazis did. What happened was this guy who started Ampex uh, was with a unit during World War II that parachuted into Germany because what they wanted to know is that Hitler was giving speeches, but he was giving them when they knew he was somewhere else. So they wanted to know how they were putting these things out live, and he wasn't there. So they parachuted into Germany, and they took over a radio station, and they went inside, and here were these three of these machines. And they were tape recorders. And what they'd really? been doing is t taping his speeches and then playing them later. Okay? So they liberated three of these machines and took them back b behind, uh, uh, on the other side of enemy lines. And they didn't only gave him two of them. He kept one and took it back to Redwood City. Where he what? then, really? wow. where he then reversed engineered it so he could understand how it worked, okay, and built his own version of it, and it became Ampex. So that's that's Ampex, which uh, when you drive down 101 past Redwood City, they still have a sign. They do they still have? I think they're still in business in some way, shape, or form. I didn't know they were, but you see, the Ampex it's right off 101. Well, you know, I got to tell the audience who's listening. That in radio, you know, you went into any radio station and there were Ampexes. In fact, you didn't even refer to them as uh, tape recorders. You referred to them as, uh, uh, go put this on the Ampex. You know, it, Ampex was just the word for tape recorder. And uh, I think oh, anybody like who made them after that had to also pay royalties to Ampex. So uh, it was a, a major company. And then they came up with the video tape recorder. Uh, so that was their next big invention. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's just that newer technologies kind of slowly put them out of work. And now, of course, who even uses tape? You know, this thing isn't being taped. Well, they came up with the VCR? No, they came up, no, they didn't come up with the, they came up with the videotape recorder, big giant machine that okay. would record TV shows. They didn't come up with the small one that went into your home. What happened is the, Japanese came up with a better way to record video, which was using, I won't even explain it, helical scan, which it went around a rotating drum in order to make the size of the tape, uh, at least in theory, bigger. I don't know if you can understand that, but it would record the signal diagonally across the tape. All right? And therefore, where you would only have like a half an inch, or maybe, yeah, a half an inch of tape, if you did it diagonally, it was the equivalent of two inches of tape, which is what Ampex used, these big two-inch reels. So the Chinese figured out a way around the way we were doing it. And uh, the, the home VCR now, to this day, if you still have a VCR, if you look inside, there's a drum, and it's a helical scan drum. So, Did I inform you of anything that was interesting there? Yeah, you... You were probably one of the first people that had a VCR. Was I close to it? Close you must to have been it. The way you like gadgetry. Yeah, I like gadgetry, uh, uh, and I think when I buy that, I didn't buy a Betamax. I waited because Betamax only had. See, here, here is. Uh, we'll go a little bit over. I don't mind. Uh, uh, the reason why Betamax didn't catch on and. VHS did, if you may remember, there were two competing I do remember flavors. That, yeah. Is because you can only record one hour on a Betamax, which was a stupid move on their part because 
stuff that people wanted to record sometimes was longer than an hour. Football games, specials on TV, things like that, you know. So to only be able to record one hour was a drawback. So here comes VHS with a slightly bigger cassette, and they could do two hours. And then they put in different speeds so you could slow it down for less quality, and you could get up to six hours on a tape. Meanwhile, there's Betamax with one hour. Which one are you going to buy? You know? Yeah. So they had a treble. So they then had their speed, and they got it up to two hours, and then they have their speed again, and they got it up to four hours, but it was always that VHS was always one step ahead of them. And then they tried putting thinner tape in there so the tapes were longer, and it, but Beta could never catch up to VHS for length of time of recording. And that's what people wanted. You know, so. There, in a nutshell, is the history of videotape, ladies and gentlemen. I love that. It, uh, kind of, that kind of saved the movie industry because uh, a movie could lose money on, in the theaters, but they could still make it back with the uh, videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that was definitely a, a, a godsend for movies. But in the very beginning, the movie companies didn't want to do it. They weren't used to giving their films away. You know, in those days, if you had a copy of their film, you could be arrested, mainly because uh, every film was a cop, a, 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 a was uh, owned by the the movie company, and um, you know they didn't want to then start giving their films away or putting them in a form where they could be copied or whatever, and they were very reluctant at the very beginning. They came up with all kinds of ways to prevent you from doing that. Um, and uh, uh, finally, they gave in, and it was the best thing they did because they wound up seeing this just this cash flow they hadn't seen before when it came to videotape. So, uh, you know, they, then they had trouble with the rental stores because a rental store buy one and they rent it out, you know, five million times or whatever, and the company wouldn't be making money off of that. So then they tried to come out with uh, a version of the rental store copy that they had to pay like a hundred dollars for per copy but that didn't work either so they they, they flutched around they they it's just that they were working on with old modalities for making money and uh they weren't willing to give that up and once they did they were suddenly realized hey we're really going to make a lot more money this way okay History of videotape, history of video rentals. Uh, yeah, I do. Hmm? I remember video stores just popping up on every corner in the oh, mid-80s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All they had to do was go out and buy a copy of each videotape. But, to see, the trouble was the movie companies weren't making money on those rentals. And that was what irked them greatly, especially in the beginning. Later on, because there were so many VCRs in the country... They knew they could just put it out, and if they found a nice, sweet price point for the tapes, like I think fourteen ninety five or something like that, that they could then sell them. You know, there's a point at which people would rather own the film than, you know, than rent it or even copy it from some friend. Uh, they want a nice, pristine copy, and you give it to them, and if you give it to them at a good price point, they'll buy it. But if you're trying to sell them for like, you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, nobody's going to buy. They're going to go steal them. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the history. Uh, of, uh, and hey, I, I hope everybody's enjoying it. I knew you'd it. know that. That's what I love about <laughs> talking with you because you drag this stuff out of me. And then I say, gee, we well, didn't. The, and after the uh, VCR, I remember that you were the only one I knew. I thought they were so cool. You had the uh, laser discs. Oh yeah, they were the size great. of a record album, I think. Yeah, they were. They were. The, they only got one hour on a side, but they was double sided, so you just turned it over and watched the second side. And later on, they came out with machines that would automatically play the other side. And a laser disc at the time was the best delivery system for video. I mean, it was pristine. And then, oh, so sharp, yeah. then the DVD came out, and it was smaller, and it was all on one side, and uh, you know, Laserdisc was out the door when that happened. So, you know, uh, so another another educational portion of our program. 
uh, courtesy of Larry. You learned as well, Alex. Yeah, I say, here's Larry Bubbles Brown, and then I talk for 15 minutes. What am I, what is this about? You're supposed to do jokes and tap dance. But you're more interesting, so I'd, we'd, uh, we'd rather hear oh, you. Oh, thank you for the compliment, Larry. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, we better go. Got to got to talk to some other people here. But uh, uh, okay. uh, we'll do this again in, in, in another week, okay? Larry. After the Super Bowl, yes. That, well, way after the Super Bowl, when this runs. Uh, <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. sixth year this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before all righty huh yeah, everything's screwing up tonight i by the way in case some people some people were right uh, that was an old interview that we just ran uh and it was because i i literally put up the wrong one i didn't put up the latest one that i did with him but we'll play that next week, okay? And that means I only have to do one with him next week instead of two. Well, anyway, I'm sorry about that. But it didn't lose us any listeners. Uh, in fact, it seemed to get us more listeners. So I guess they, they didn't remember the discussion that we had uh, with Larry Bubbles Brown. Anyway, uh, hello, everybody. How are you? I walked uh, two miles today, I walked. And I was exhausted. I mean, it's just, you know, this, uh, this whole COVID fatigue thing is just disgusting. So, anyway. Mm. And I have coffee in a different cup here. I had blue in there before, and now I've got that. And if I got green, it wouldn't go right. Anyway. So, anyway, um, let me see here. Anything uh, happening? Nah, nothing much is happening. Uh, so I think I will just go to our, uh, our, uh, I find that I don't really talk a lot anymore. I don't have long rambling rants that I do any longer, but anyway, let's, uh, let's go jump into our, uh, uh, there they are, our citizen panel. There's, uh, there's Jeff and there's Alan and there's trucker Steve and there's Charlie and uh, we'll wait for other people to call in as well. Hello everybody. How are you this evening? Hello. Uh, you okay, everybody? Yeah. Did anybody notice that that was an interview I ran a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. You did. No. You did realize that. Okay. I'm sorry. I I'm screwing up a lot lately. I. Uh, That's all right. It was a good interview. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 It was. So I. You know. I. I don't feel bad about it. But there's always somebody on our chat room who figures it out <laughs> and then makes me look like an asshole. And tries to make me look like a fool, which I am. Had to push the button and get Chad out of there. In fact, somebody <laughs> wrote something on here. What was it? Uh, it, it and please, somebody explain this to me. Uh, uh, it, it goes uh, uh, R.I.P. Shock D, and then somebody corrected it. Shock G. Uh, am I so old that I don't know who the hell Shock G is? Does anybody here know who Shock G is? No. Nope. All right. Well, then uh, Tyson's Acosta, fuck you. Yeah. Huh? Apparently he just What did you say? Tyson's what? Apparently he just died, though. Well, apparently, if somebody's doing an RIP to him. What What? what who, what'd you say about Tyson's Acosta? Uh, well, outside of fuck him. Uh, oh, fuck you know, him. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, hey, hello. There's, uh, there. Let's see here. Who we got here so far? We got uh, Jeff, and we got uh, uh, Trucker Steve, and we got Alan, and we got Charlie, and we got Josh, and and look and look. You've got the uh, got the ocean in back of you there, right, uh, Schmoody? Yes. Yes. She's look at that. Oh. The bird. Oh, bird. Oh. Oh, Ooh, squirrel. Yeah. Uh, a, a squirrel. Where's the flying squirrel? Is I'm oh. kidding. <laughs> where, like where are you? Uh, no, but look, look at that. Okay. Well, we're getting a lot of your. Uh, unfortunately, Rip. we're getting we're getting my video in here as well. Shit. Yeah. 
but uh, but we we believe that it's really nice out there. And uh, yeah, just pretend. Yeah, and you have an owl standing out there. Sure. A f- f a f a h l fake as hell. F a f a k e or f a u k. F a u k. Well, I call it F A H, fake as hell, Al. It's oh, supposed oh. to keep. We have woodpeckers. Yeah. The woodpeckers up here are kind of retarded. They they look in your window and then they go. Weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's nice. That's really. Why don't nice. you put up a sign outside that says "No woodpeckers allowed"? <laughs> <laughs> paste it to paste it to the window. And uh, or 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 woodpeckers will be shot on sight. Or my uh, I like that. Or my other bird is an owl. The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you you were Alex in that in that video with Larry Bubbles Brown talking about Ampex. Yeah. Founded seventy seven years ago. Yeah, in the Redwood City, California. And Larry Bubbles Brown is correct. The Ampex sign is still up there. Um, along 101, uh, kind of in Redwood City, I guess, is what's mm. there. I think the Ampex company still exists on some level. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they do now, but, you know. Well, my my father had, a, he was electrical, he had a PhD in electrical engineering, worked for the U.S. government, mm-hmm. doing secret stuff, I guess, or whatever. But anyhow, mm-hmm. he worked there for a while, and then he moved over to Fairchild Semiconductor, Yeah, where yeah. his... Next office over neighbor was somebody named Andy Grove. Does that name ring a bell yeah, to anybody? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no. The okay. Uh, yeah. No. I know. Okay. Who. Andy Grove was one of the three founders of probably something that everybody's using right now: Intel Semiconductor. Right. Right. But um, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken i think that ampex was the first technology company in silicon valley probably it, i mean i remember it as being the first and for years in broadcasting until digital came along you didn't go into a studio that didn't have an ampex in it right you know that yeah. was just the standard of the industry that's what we yeah. used you know there were a lot of other people who tried to back compete. in the 70s they used to record on ampex real tapes uh, uh, Ampex what? Real tapes. Real tapes. Real, oh, real. oh, you mean the actual tapes themselves? They, yeah, like they, the what they did program. is they... Yeah, I used to record radio shows so I could play back the music without having to buy the albums. Yeah, and you, you, and what, you didn't do it on an Ampex machine, but you did it on Ampex tape, right? No, I did oh. it on Sony. Sony yeah. real, real recorder, but it was yeah. Ampex tapes. Yeah, well, the Ampex tapes were simply branded. I don't think they actually put them out, you know. Was somebody just, told know. me 3M manufactured them for them. Yeah, I'm sure somebody else did because they mm. they didn't have they didn't want to have to go into that business. They just wanted to sell the goddamn things, you know. So yeah, they let so, somebody else make it for them. So. so in 1968, my father's working in Fairchild Semiconductor with uh, Andy Grove mm-hmm. and Gordon Moore, who. Um, used to work with Ampex, the two of them. Mm-hmm. And they said, we're going to start up this company. You want to buy into it? Mm-hmm. And my father's like, yeah, it'll never go anywhere. But he put up $100,000 venture capital and got stock in Intel. And kind of the rest is history. Yeah. So did so, your father... Did uh, your, did my your father fa- did very well. Oh, okay. I wanted to know, did he cash out early? That would be the fun part of the story. No. But, but, well, he... he he lived on part of it in the latter part of his life. He died in 1992. Mm-hmm. But he left my sister and I the balance of the Intel stock. So, can I? Can you give us an, a guesstimate at how much it was? Yeah, like about 70 m, split between the two of okay. us, and then, ta- and yeah. then nice. taxes. We had to pay some taxes, a lot of taxes. Yeah, but you know when yeah. somebody hands you. Thirty-five million. I mean, I don't mind paying five or seven million dollars to you. The had got thirty-five million bucks, and you yeah. had to be a cop. And I haven't been nicer to you. <laughs> but his sister got out. Huh? 
Your sister got half, right? My sister, yeah, my sister yeah, got half. half. Was, it was 70. 70 million. So all, he, in Intel, all in Intel stock. So he got and We decided, you know, I, I moved some of it into other stocks and left some in Intel and, uh, you know, so. Maybe Charlie would like to meet his sister. Your sister. So that's why you. Have, that's why you. Have my a, sister. My sister <laughs> tends to like to date Latinos, so. So that's why you have this "fuck all y'all" attitude. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. By the way, Charlie, what is that uh, T-shirt you're wearing tonight? Uh, since I I, oh, I did I, I did not uh, pass algebra. Okay. Well, it should be two I for the answer, and so it's, it's all oh, fun and games until somebody loses an I. Except that I've heard that mathematics is now racist. Oh, is it? I don't think so. I read an article today, and they were talking about mathematics is racist, and I was ready to claw my face. Do you, do you, have a do you have a T-shirt that says it's all shits and giggles and tell somebody, never mind. So. Yeah. My father did very well. He invested that hundred thousand dollars as a silent partner, venture capitalist. Yeah, you know. And I, as a kid, I got to meet people like Robert Moore, uh, no Gordon Moore, Robert Noyce, mm -hmm. which the official founders of Intel. Mm -hmm. So Robert Moore, I don't know anybody who has an electronics degree here. Yeah, it's a it's it's not only was he famous for being one of the founders of Intel. But there's something called Moore's Law, M O O R. And Moore's Law states the computing power will double every 24 months. And he's been pretty much right on that. Yep. Yep. In fact, yeah. uh, he's finding out now that he's being put out of the computer business because Intel is now begging for business. Hmm. Uh, uh, well, no, uh, what happened was Apple came up with this new chip called the M1. And so they don't need Intel anymore. And they're like begging them Ooh. to come back. Yeah. We'll make the chip for you. We'll yeah. do a better chip for yeah. you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. I will bet that your, how, how many processor chip do you have on your computer? Would you say 18, no. 12 core? 12 I'm, core. Uh, I think I'm, how am I? Uh, I'm 12 core, yeah. 12 core. I'm hardcore, that's a, hardcore. That's a, yeah, that's an Intel Xeon processor, right? I, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't care. Okay, good. It's you look good today, Alex. What do you mean I look good today? You just do. You know, I mean, you're, 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 I mean, are you are you, you coming on to me or something here? Uh, this... No. <laughs> you, you you might want to you know you might want to get know, to know me. I'll give you some Intel stock. Yeah, something. right. Well, you know, you're my <laughs> you're my new best pal. Jeez, why'd you ever become a cop? Uh, because my father wanted me to become an engineer or a doctor or something, and I wanted to be a cop. So you want so, and even though you, you didn't become an engineer or whatever, he still left you that stock. Wow. Left me and my sister that stock. Well, some of it went to my mother and him were divorced, and some of it went to uh, a couple charities and stuff. So we didn't end up with the whole thing. And and the biggest charity of all out of it was the U.S. government. Taxes yeah, but you got you got you got quite a <clears throat> quite a few million, right? Not several million. Yeah, several million. So. Oh boy! All right, you can survive. Yeah. Yeah, I can survive. I can survive. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about buying New York, but yeah, you know, <laughs> you, you can't afford it. Well, it's back no, down. It, it, believe it or not, uh, it, it it has lost value, so it's only worth sixteen dollars now. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know. You can buy it pretty easily. I, I have, uh, in my retired years, I have blown a lot of money. Hmm. You know, having having a lot of assets that are liquid, yeah. I've made some poor choices. Mm -hmm. I've made some good choices, too, but anyhow. So anyway, so today I got some uh, good news or bad news. It depends on what happens with my life. But oh. it seems as though um, uh, 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 SpaceX has gotten the NASA contract to go to the moon. Instead yeah, aren't they launching a ship with four astronauts? Well, they, no, they, they, did, it they did it today. Yeah. yeah. And they had to yeah. kind of swerve a little bit to get around some space garbage. 
Good yeah, there was grief. a VW up in space that they just about hit. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it. It. it uh, we have a lot of garbage up there. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of garbage up there. So they had to do a little, but it turned out it wasn't very close. So, but eighteen uh, miles or something. Like but that, this right? woman is on there this time, and oh, she, yeah. and she went up, uh, um, occupying the same seat that her husband occupied in the last flight of the SpaceX flight. Uh, nice. So, so it's a man and wife uh, uh, the, team there that, you know, are going up into space. So it's it's really cool. It's very cool. But anyway, so they got the moon contract, and they claim they'll be on the moon by 2024. And I'm starting to count going, oh, how am I going to be? That's only three years. Yeah. I hope I live long enough. Try to live there? I hope it's I, a good thing we have Charlie on the show to do the math, Alex. Uh, well, I hope I live long enough to uh, to see it because that's one of my, you know, I I I was very mad when we never went back to the moon, when we just you know, but it's interesting that I think it's easier to do now than it was back when we did it, because the technology has taken great leaps and bounds, and I think they can go back. I think the only way uh, thing they need to do to go back to the moon is to have all the uh, uh, the uh, you know the the rockets and things like that and uh, they'll they'll be able to do that within the next two years two three you years. you want to go to the moon or you just want to live long enough I want to live long them. enough to see them go to mo the moon again because oh, I, I got so pissed we didn't continue <clears throat> going there you know and uh, Mars is next after that you know and uh, I I I think it's going to be SpaceX all the way doing this crap you know. He can't build a, a car that sells very well, but boy, he can build those spaceships. Yes, Schmoody. All I remember as a kid with mm. the whole man on the moon thing were the fucking frogmen. That frog when the capsule would land into the ocean, mm -hmm. yeah. the frogmen would get them out. Yeah. And so then oh, as a yeah. kid, we'd go to the beach and we'd like, you go in the water. No, I ain't going in the water. You go in the water. No, I ain't mm -hmm. going in the water. Fucking frogmen. Yeah. We were so freaked out. Yeah, but you know the thing is, the Russians have always been landing on on uh, uh, on on just, you know, earth, not in the water. I don't yeah, know. They why. Always landed on the ground. Yeah. What? Water. Yeah, they always did it on solid land. They always landed on the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and uh, uh, we some people could never figure out why they chose to use water rather than the ground because they oh, it's softer. No, it's not. Oh. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> that's the. What would you yeah, say, cool. Charlie? I said it's not soft at that speed. Not at that mm -hmm. speed. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it it cools the capsule down quicker. No. Sure no. it does. No. Wait. Yeah. Uh, it's, hits the water and the capsule cools down. That capsule gets real hot coming back in. Yeah, but if that were the case, okay. Yes, it gets really hot, but it cools down before it gets to the water. Because Ow. if it, if it weren't cool when it hit the water, wouldn't there be a lot of steam? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think well, so. Well, where did the Russians land? Siberia, and they land in the snow, and it goes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly, whether the land landed for Russia, they they were out in the wilderness so long that a bear came by, and they were worried about. And so they carried guns on their missions after that because they didn't know if they'd encounter bears when they landed. Oh, really? At least that's the rumor. Yeah, well, they, prob they probably didn't go in the ocean because of sharks. Yeah. Look who's joined us. Brian Ludwig is here, and uh, oh, wow. Tony's Brian. here, and, of course, Brian, the other Brian is here. We'll call you Ludwig, and we'll call the other one Brian. Okay? <laughs> you get a lot of people. Oh, guess who's here? Long time no see, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. It's Patrick Blasey. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Patrick. Hi. Are you into the space? Yay. Are you into the space ah. stuff at all? I mean, do you like the idea that uh, that uh, SpaceX just got the the uh, contract to go to the moon? Yeah, because I thought Obama was a moron and NASA to begin with. So yes. I think it's a, it's a good idea. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, it was because Obama wouldn't go to the moon? Well, I mean, he, he, 
the end of the space shuttle oh, yeah. program. And I mean, I'm I'm just glad to see us back heading towards what I remember even as my childhood, where the space shuttle is going up all the time. So, yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I I like it. I think it's it's good. It's fun. Yeah, I, I well, uh, you know, the only thing is, I hope I live long enough to see it. They're supposed to get there in 2024, so we're just. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's whatever. Well, once we get another pandemic, you never know. There's gonna be another strain. <laughs> I know. Oh the, man. The, we had a fourth booster. Shot. Today I walked two miles and I was getting lightheaded and everything. Of course, I was wearing oh, the mask. Cool. I was, oh, the mask. Okay, yeah. It's good if your head gets if you get lightheaded. I, I don't like walking with that mask. Uh, well, it's very difficult. It's not it is. Easy. I was. I took a but walk with my sister. But wait a minute. I got. I've got to apologize to Patrick. Okay, I'm going to apologize to you, Patrick. Mea culpa. Uh, there is some talk. We we had a talk the other night privately, right? About you saying that once you got your in, you know, you got your vaccination, you weren't going to wear a mask except where you were required to because you had to go, want to go into the restaurant or the movie or the whatever, right? And I kind of got on your case about that. But we do this as a matter of taking care of each other and looking out for each other. Well, it's starting to come out now that a lot of scientific minds are saying that, well, maybe it isn't as necessary to wear a mask outdoors any longer. So. And I got, I got my first shot today. You get your first shot today. Okay. Yeah, I knocked it off. Yeah, so I've got, I go back in three weeks. And then I'll give it two weeks after that, mm -hmm. and then people can kiss my fucking ass with a mask. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? Everybody can get the fucking shot now. So if you don't have it, it's not my responsibility to keep your dumb ass from getting sick. So take care of yourself, and if you don't like that I don't have a mask, don't come near me. There you go. I don't want your ass near me anyway. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. That ass is the right level. <laughs> so, but seriously, I yeah. mean, it's not my responsibility anymore. Now that the vaccine is available to everyone, just like the flu shot, it's not mm. my responsibility to make sure somebody else doesn't get the flu. You can go get it. Go get it. But I'll do my due diligence. What is it? Two weeks after the second <coughs> shot, the wait, and I'll do that. And then after that, I'm done. Unless, like, I'm going to the hospital where it's required. But a everywhere hospital? else, yeah. I mean, you'll yeah. wear a mask where it's required. Where they, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But I, unless, I mean, if I'm gonna go to store A yeah. and they require it, but I can get what I need at store B and they don't, mm -hmm. I'm going to store B. <laughs> oh, okay. So you much, know, thank uh, God for my great, great, great uncle, William Stewart Halstead, who introduced rubber gloves into surgery. Yes, yes. Let alone Ooh. invented the roach clip. Oh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> Halstead clamp. <laughs> the Halstead clamp. <laughs> the Halstead no, clamp. No, her, 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 her. I, I like your uncle. Is this your uncle or your dad? Or... He's your, my great, it, her, great, great uncle. Great, great, great uncle invented the gloves. He introduced American. rubber gloves into surgery. Yeah. Oh. Did did um, the first gallbladder surgery on his uh, mother in his uh, sister's kitchen. Mm -hmm. the, in his sister's kitchen. Yep. Uh, wow. The mastectomy is the Halstead mastectomy. Okay. Yeah. So he did all kinds of. Uh, so pretty much, he like carving up women is what you're saying. <laughs> well, no, I mean, he opened up Johns Hopkins, but the whole time he was a surgeon, he was addicted to cocaine and morphine because he had gone to England mm -hmm. and done um, experiments with Freud. This is when they were using cocaine as an anesthetic right. for dentistry, right. and he got hooked right. on it. Mm. Yes, yeah. and he bitched. I read a book, Cocaine Courage, Cocaine Courage, and something else, and he was bitching about the price of cocaine, which was like twenty-two cents a gram. Oh wow! Jesus. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, yes, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Ludwig. 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah. I was just, I haven't talked, and I'm using a new configuration on a new computer on a new machine with new equipment, so I was making sure. Yeah. That other than that, um, I pretty, pretty much agree with damn near every word that Mr. Blazer could just had said. Mm-hmm. It's get, starting to get on my, it's starting to get on my bad nerve too. All this pedantic, you know, treating us. What I'll, I'll add to that. Patrick, and you probably agree with me on this. The uh, these these governors who treat us like children, it's really starting to piss me off too. They mm-hmm. pedantically talk down to us as though we're six fucking years old, and uh, you know we're grown adults, we're grown ass adults. Uh, we get our shots and reopen the states already. Enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Sam. Hello, Sam. Hi, Alex. Uh, we've never. It's been a long time. How long ago did you call us? Because I'm trying to remember you in a way. Oh, I'm in Cincinnati, and the last time I called a show was probably uh, four years ago. Oh, something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome back. Yeah, uh, I'm usually I'm usually listening to you like <laughs> on like days later. Mm-hmm. I'm very rarely up at this time. So. Uh-huh. Neither am I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bullshit! Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so uh, let me see here. Where were we? Oh yeah. So uh, so Brian agrees with you, uh, Patrick, and and I have to kind of give you a mea culpa in that there are some people medically. Who are saying this now? Uh, you know. Yes, Jeff, you disagree. Uh, no, I am no, no, no. Okay, he's no, no, no. But you know, I want to. I have a little bit more uh, risks that you guys might have. Well, I have. Ri- what do you mean? My risk is I'm 81 years old. That's a ki- well. That's a good. No- that's yeah, a good. Yeah, one. I mean that. that I'm right behind well, you on that. That's the reason why I'm still wearing a mask is because he, I, 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 you. If you can still get something, okay, I don't want to get it, okay? I don't want to even take a chance on it. It's not going to kill me. Not with the <coughs> shot. It's not going to kill me. But And I hate wearing the mask. I've gotten to the point where I just, I go, oh, this is terrible. It's just drudgery. I get a headache from it sometimes. Huh? Yeah, well, I have a, I have, I, 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 I get me. lightheaded from using it. You know? my nose You're right. not 81. You're 80. I'm 81. No, you're not. When were you born? 39? Yes. You lied. Yeah. Do some math. What, did I lie about my age to you or something? My uncle would have been 82. I was born in 1939. No. 39. Yeah. Aren't you 80? No. It's 2021. 20, I know, but I was born in December. Oh, you just missed the So it's the end of the year. Hijo de puta. And, and if I had said maybe January and then we said 39, then, then you'd say, okay, 81, you know. But, you know, yes, uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Alan who wants to ask a question here. No, I just want to agree with Jeffrey. I'll, I got to tell you that uh, six months ago, when before we had vaccines, younger people were not getting sick. And then the, then the virus changed, mutated, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And now... Now it's mainly younger people that are getting it because of the new. Yeah, but but, but Pat, Patrick is saying, I, what I he's, got what he's saying. But no, what he's saying is is that once he gets the shots, his chances of getting a deadly version of it is almost negligent. Okay, Today. but it but young Today. people should also get it. Today. His chances. Well, I mean, you know, how uh, I if it mutates from all the idiots, Republicans and shit that are not getting it, and it mutates again, the vaccine may be worthless. Well, I said this last night, and I'll say it again: if you didn't get the shot, then you don't have a a card that says you got the shot, and then that means you can't get in anywhere. You can't go to concerts. You can't go to movies. You can't go into restaurants. You know, if you want to join the society, get the goddamn shot. And protect what? everybody else. Patrick, in spite of the fact that he doesn't want to wear a mask, is doing the responsible thing. He's getting yep. the vaccine. I'll agree there. Absolutely. You know? yeah. and, and they should. And and, and uh, you know, um, I, I I I didn't like it when uh, what's his name, the Kentucky uh, senator, 
said, well, oh. you know, you should get a payoff for or doing... Paul. Yeah, uh, Ru, uh, RuPaul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> RuPaul. RuPaul. Rand Paul. <laughs> right. uh, uh, when when Ru- RuPaul uh, said that, you know, that, uh, well, we, we should have some kind of payoff for all this. You know, we should not have to wear masks or whatever. He was wrong in that being the, the payoff on it. But the payoff should be that we all are free of this dreaded, horrible disease. But unless everybody goes out and gets the shots, yeah. we're not going to. You know, there That's are going right. to be some people giving it to other people. And right now, the people who are getting it the most are young people. Yeah. Yep. But because that, they haven't taken the but that is because Which is of, fine because they know who this D guy is or whatever his name is. It's or, Shock G. Shock G's right here. Shock, it's Digital I, Underground. Oh. He was rapper in Oakland with uh, Tupac Shakur when Tupac Shakur started. So I see. Okay. It, it, maybe it's a local oh, thing, but okay. he, he died. By so the way, I was, sh- the, I was the other asshole who corrected Tyson's. Yeah. Uh, Shmoody, did, did you know that? Did you? Yeah. Ha- you did? Oh yeah, I mean, I was in Oakland for 24 years. Come on. Oh, so now. you knew who Shock G was? Yeah, yeah, Shock G, Too Short, Tupac. Come on now. I know who Tupac was. Yeah, Digital Underground. So yeah. Come on now. <laughs> oh boy, I really feel old. Jeez. Oh, I gotta hate. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. The other guy here who's young, who doesn't know, is Patrick. Right? You never heard of him. I think more. It's a, more of a local thing too. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm from Ohio. Everybody knows who Tupac was. Everybody I don't know. I was raised in the Bay Area, and I never heard of him. So. Oh, town Tupac? in the house. <laughs> Did you hear Tupac? Yeah. Okay. Come well, on. he was in the band with Tupac, the original band. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Now I know. Yeah. That was the guy that was the janitor, right? The yeah. Humpty Dance. Remember the Humpty Dance yes. back in the nineties? Yes. Yes. So, yes. Sam, Sam, you live in uh, in uh, in in Ohio, Cincinnati, Cincinnati yep. Ohio. Cincinnati. And how how is it there? How is the whole? Uh, well, it's COVID thing. I guess it's getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I've been, you know, I work at an auto auction, and I haven't had the ability to stay home. So I've actually been going to the auction every day for the last year. I got COVID in November. Um, it knocked me out for two weeks, but that was the worst of it. And now I'm fully vaccinated. And between having had it and being vaccinated, you know, I feel invincible almost. Yeah. But, yeah. But I still but, can't go. Well, I mean, how old? Are, how, how how old are you? Uh, let's. Oh God, this year I'll be fifty-five. Fifty-five. Okay, you're kind of not in a danger zone particularly. You know, right, right. Yeah. But, that, but how bad was it when you got it? Um, uh, the only thing I was just exhausted. You know, I didn't have any breathing issues. I didn't have any of the other things. I just, you know, I I slept practically for two weeks straight. You, you what for two weeks straight? I I slept yeah. for oh, two slept. weeks. Yeah. Two weeks straight. Yeah. Okay. Good. You know the. But glad to see you're okay and that you got the shots and you're okay. Brian, have you gotten your shots, Brian Ludwig? One of two. One uh, of my two. second one will be in the first week of May. Okay. So we're all kind of getting up to it. And now here in New York, you don't even have to make an appointment. You just walk in. And that's the newest thing. Now let me bring something up here that's been in the news. There are several Republican states that, besides their desire to... Uh, go ahead and and violate the way in which you get to vote. Uh, the latest thing that they're trying to pass in, in, uh, the, in the Congress and the Senate are laws against demonstrating. States are yeah. trying to make laws against demonstrating. And so I asked Josh, would this cut, cut it at the Supreme, at the Supreme Court? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, how do you not allow people to demonstrate? Isn't that an American, a God-given American right? Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, I'm sure what they're going to do is, obviously, it's not going to be cloaked as if you're not allowed to demonstrate because 
everyone knows that would be unconstitutional. So they'll just make so many unreasonable restrictions that it probably just makes it impossible to do so. No, but they want in some of these states take time to sort out. But yeah, in the end, is what will get them in trouble because it will be you know completely unreasonable. For example. Yeah, but I mean, the, so far as I see, they're they're trying in these states to prevent people from demonstrating. To make laws against yeah, them. Yeah, that'll be their end goal. I mean, they're gonna they'll attack it the same way that that they did abortion, for example, where they realize that they cannot, by any sort of real victory, outlaw abortion in the way that they want. Okay, they can't get a law put on the books in all fifty states that says a woman can't have an abortion and. If she does, her and the doctor go to prison. I mean, it's a law just like... So they're know, going to try and do whatever they can do in a particular state. So what they'll do is they'll slice yeah. it up into all these little restrictions, pain mm -hmm. in the asses, mm -hmm. fees you got to pay, forms you got to fill out, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? They'll make it so that it is just such a huge hassle mm -hmm. that most people will just give it up. And for those who don't, they'll just make it almost impossible to get. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I'm sure that's the route they'll take because they've been fairly successful at it on the abortion front, you know. Um, so that's, that's, I'm sure that's the way they'll go about it, you know, because you obviously can't write, you can't take a blank sheet of paper and write, uh, so-and-sos are not allowed to go down to Main Street and stand in a circle and protest. Everyone yeah. would read that in black and white and right. say, oh, that's unconstitutional. We can't do that. So what they'll say is if so-and-sos want to go down to Main Street and protest, they first must do one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, 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 and it'll be a book yeah. about this thick. And if you don't do all that, you can't protest, and you're breaking the law. I mean, that was tried and true in the 20s, the 30s, you know, I mean, you know, so they didn't get away with it then, but it'll take time to put it out. I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to show up tomorrow and everyone's going to say you can't do it, but yeah. we're turning to a time again where we're going to go through this cycle again. I mean, Charlie, Charlie us, Wallace so has his it. hand up. Charlie? Yeah, the problem is they're passing laws in states like Georgia, and Texas has one they're voting on this week or next week uh, about whether it's going to be legal or not for you to run down a protester in the street. Same with Florida. It's perfectly legal. You can. You don't even have to have any. It, yeah, you don't even have to have any. They don't have to be doing anything wrong. If they're in the street protesting, run them over. You're fine. Where's this at? <laughs> In Georgia, I think, right? In Florida, and Florida. Georgia, Texas, yeah. Yeah. Right on. I think I'm going to move to Texas then. Uh, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, th I think maybe that pretty soon we're not going to be able to talk loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Brian uh, Ludwig. Regarding the protesting in the middle of streets and especially busy intersections in cities and what in heavily congested areas. I'm of, um, I have, uh, I have mixed, um, opinions on that of two minds of that because, um, well, if it's like, uh, if there's like somebody in an ambulance needing to get to the hospital, um, aren't you and aren't you as protesters endangering and impeding that person's ability to receive life-saving medication or life-saving, even if it's a, uh, well, even if it's a commercial driver, you know, on their last hour before they go before they go home or whatever. Um, well, I think you're giving I think you're giving extenuating circumstances here, and, I and there are extenuating circumstances, and, and that isn't but that isn't the reason why they're trying to stop people from protesting. I know there's you know, always an ulterior motive. Yeah, on I, either I, side there is. I mean, that's I, what the law says. Say I, that again. Sorry. So that's what the law says. If you're protesting in the street, you can be run over, and there's nothing anybody or your family can do. Yeah, but do about. what what do you have to say about Brian's feeling that it, let's say, you know, he's giving an extenuating well, circumstance. Ways. The Boogaloo Boys were doing that in Michigan, where these people they were blocking entrances to the hospital, where people were could not get to the hospital to get surgeries and stuff that they needed. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 
There, there can be over too by this well, well I, but you know, my question is, if you're demonstrating, but you're doing something like impeding somebody's ability to get into a hospital for emergency treatment, aren't you breaking some other law? You know, so you would think so. You would think so. <clears throat> Jaywalking. Yeah. <clears throat> Jaywalking. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to bring up is is it seems like the 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 Republicans and I'm 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 sorry, uh, uh, Patrick, if I'm picking on the Republicans here, although you're a conservative, not a Republican. Um, they are trying these things in various states. This is the Republicans doing this. This isn't a bunch of Democrats doing this. The other thing they're doing is, how many of do we have here from California? Allen's from California, Kevin's in California, uh, uh, Schmoody is in California, Brian uh, Neary is in California. You're having a recall in your state. Uh, the recall has not Trying been... Trying to. The, yeah, the recall yeah. hasn't happened yet because they, I don't think they've reached the number of, uh, <coughs> of people on their uh, list that they have to uh, that they have to have they claim to have reached the number and then some but they're counting them right now yeah. yeah well here's the thing the only reason why that whole recall is happening is it's the republicans trying to change california into a republican state because here's what's going to happen if they hold the recall then people have to line up and run for governor so that when you go and vote for recall uh, that you want to recall him, uh, you then have to vote for somebody. All right. If you don't recall him, I don't think you have to vote for somebody. But here's the problem with it all: uh, the people who are going to run against Gavin Newsom are Republicans. So the only person who, if Newsom l was recalled, who would become governor would be Republicans. Am I right about that? Does that make sense? Do you know what get is what I'm Caitlin saying? Is Caitlyn Jenner a Republican? Yes. Yes. Uh, good mm -hmm. grief. Wow. And, and and they've been trying to recall him since day one. Right after he got elected, down here at Safeway, they had a little table there and they were trying to recall him. First thing. Really or anything else. Uh, just because he's a Democrat. It's uh, California. Yet. California has exactly. to do something about that. You know, I mean, come on. How many times but does they this also happen? have to get the turnout as well? And if the majority of Democrats couldn't care less, they won't show up to vote. Right. And so he could get recalled. He no, could. he could. He could, if, if they have to re-vote mm -hmm. for a Republican and the Democrats don't show up to vote for a Republican and there's only a certain amount of Republicans. No, but what I understand is <clears throat> on your ballot for recall, there's the recall election. There's a re the recall election, right? And at the recall election, there's also a list of people who are running for governor. And uh, the whole thing being that if, uh, if, uh, 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 that, that if, um, what, Newsom what's the answer? doesn't get enough votes. If, if, if Newsom gets enough votes to be recalled, then they go to all this. If you vote not to, rec to recall him, you can then go down and vote for any one of these 30 other people who are running, all at the same time, all in the same election. Does that make sense? Am I, have yeah. I got it right? Kevin? Have I yeah, got there, has it? To be a, there has to be a full ballot, yes. In other words, the, the, the recall is going to be the same election that is going to decide who the new governor yeah. is. Right, but there has to be a both Democrat and Republican on the ballot. <laughs> Well, the, does it? Because what Democrat is going to be on that ballot to go and take uh, the vote away from? I don't Newsom? know, but they, they would have to be one. I mean, it's all a it very con, it's all a very confusing process. And then when they decide who's going to be governor, it isn't like the person who has the you know it's the person who has the most votes wins, and he could have like ten percent of the vote. I mean, that's how Schwartz yeah, and probably have to go through governor. the whole process because they have that convoluted you know you can have two democrats and all that the primary thing yeah yeah i mean it's just it's it's horrible it's horrible and it's it's a it's a republican plot <clears throat> they have um 
they say they say they have more than enough votes, but mm-hmm. they also are saying that there's a lot of bogus signatures. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also saying that, um, what was the other thing I was thinking of? Uh, that they're also saying that a lot of Democrats signed that petition, mm-hmm. which could be possible. We don't know. Yeah. Until they count it and tell us what happened. Okay. So you really don't know until they tell us what happened. Yeah. But it, it's... They have more than more than enough votes, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, you know, so, there's it's, been a lot of... There's been a lot of people out there, and I know in this area, <clears throat> that were uh, calling for that stuff. And, and there was a lot of BS being spoken as well. So who knows? So, so what is Caitlyn Jenner, what are the qualifications for Caitlyn Jenner to be uh, governor? Uh, she was on the cover of a Wheaties box? I still can't get over that as a kid. I remember eating Wheaties. I was, yeah. He was no. like an icon. I can't get over that. My mother couldn't believe that when that happened. She thought it was a joke, actually. I mean, she was on a Wheaties box but doesn't have one? I mean, you know, come on. That's great. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> Why is she running for governor? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. She announced really? today that she's running for governor. Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty awesome. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, a big and she's, come she's on. A, uh, she says she she's a, 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 a she's a social um uh, a, a social liberal and a f- fiscal Right winger, yes, Brian Ludwig. Well, all I have to say is that I guess they should galvanize the Democratic Party and the uh, Democratic voters and people who want to retain Gavin Newsom. And uh, you know, I mean, he's better than I, I, I would pick Newsom over McConnell, blindfolded and drunk, obviously. But you know, this is bear in mind, this is the same guy who you know, when telling other, much like our own governor in Pennsylvania, Tom Wolf. Tell when we when he told the people of California stay at home and you know take your leave your masks on when you go to restaurants and take them off only between bites of your food, which really pissed me off. Well, I don't this know is the how same you guy do who, that. This is the same guy who went out and you know hobnobbled and bullshit. Yeah. While everyone else, yeah. So he's an elitist. He was telling that. people to totally stay right home. That. Brian, mm-hmm. he was telling people to stay home. Period, and went out. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah exactly. Yeah. Was you know what? You better. Yeah. You better. They, they deserve to have their asses. If they get their asses handed yeah. to them by Caitlyn Jenner, they deserve it. They fucking deserve it. <laughs> really? Everybody's I winner. Have to fucking Alex. They fucking deserve I don't it. care how terrible you are. Nobody deserves Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. Apparently, apparently, uh, people Good. in California who rest on their asses and don't and don't like Kevin is saying. I mean, what, get, what, what did you get last time? Up. You got an action movie hero running for governor. You got you a him? you got a he porn actress. Uh, uh, running. I'm trying to remember what her name was now. Mary Perry. Yeah, I think she came in fourth, didn't she? It's funny. Uh, I remember during the, you know, after Gray Davis, when he was recalled, mm-hmm. when they had all these people come in, you had like uh, the... Oh, Gary Coleman the, came in third. But here's yeah. the thing. Yeah. It's Mary funny Coleman. to talk about, but you're coming dangerously, <laughs> precariously close to saying, oh, well, they don't lack the qualifications because they're porn actors. Oh, we need a wine-sipping, caviar-eating, elitist professional politician yeah well oh, well you well, have, well let me let me give fuck. you let me give you it's, Amer- it's america for fuck's sake well wait a minute when was the last time that voting for the average man or voting for a non-politician has worked when is the last time that voting for politicians i mean has i mean i mean the last come on years. i i only have to give you donald trump as an example yeah. <laughs> and i give you the first who wrote news. the crime bill what was responsible for the incarceration of how many millions of African Americans have turned our country into a penal colony? Who? So I ask you again: When's the last time that voting for a professional politician worked in the last thirty-five? Well, it's certainly years? we know that it doesn't work when the guy doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, okay. Or when he does know what he's doing and he's doing it. You see, I mean, I, I, I think you, I think you've got the wrong attitude. I mean, I like, I want a politician because. They know where the bodies are buried. I have an attitude. It's called an anarchistic attitude. That's what I have. No, but you're not an anarchist. You well, think you are. That. You're an imaginary anarchist. 
What do you but think? Every I am? Californian will have a box of Wheaties. <laughs> in every house. <laughs> yes. Beats a chicken in every pot, then. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I I I just uh, I just think that what's going on in in California. My feeling is California should not have the ability to recall mm. unless the, the guy has committed a crime. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be up if he goes out in the street and he takes a gun and kills somebody, okay, time to we recall. <laughs> but short of that, I mean, come on, you know, I mean, what do you, what do you? Oh, govern what? every day as though it's your last day to govern, and that you can be. If it works in business, if everybody's expendable yeah, but, in the but, world of business, no, then everybody's expendable. No, but but and what, what, what you do is is you're allowing for buyer's remorse, you know. I mean, a guy gets elected, okay, he got elected, you got him for four years. And unless he does something highly illegal, you can't recall him. But if every time a guy runs for governor in California, and in most cases happens to be a Republican, was Gray Davis a Republican, de Democrat? He was a Democrat. He was a Democrat. He was a Democrat. Hey, you know, every time he, he isn't a Republican, you decide you're going to recall him. All he's doing is spending his four years fighting off a recall for crime. Also, look at it this way. It's the first time in 20 years, almost 20 years, that uh, recall has garnered this much attraction. So it's not like recalls happen willy-nilly. They, they do happen in California willy-nilly now. I mean, 20 first years. Time in 20, it, first time in 20 years, that's about half the time. Then I guess you better gonna get into the age of social media and the promulgation of like ubiquitous technology. I bet I, I guess these politicians better do a better job politicking. Light a firecracker. Well, under yeah, their but, ass. but the but the, the reason they're going after him is not because of anything terrible that he did. They go, went after him because he's not a Republican. Day one. Huh? What were you saying, Brian? Day one, day one, they were trying to get him recalled to Safeway. They had the line going. Yeah, it so. wasn't like they were unhappy with him for any particular reason, except that he was a dem uh, he was a Democrat. If I were a Californian, which I'm not, um, I would say I would I would be in favor of this uh, crusade for my own reasons, and I've outlined. Oh, because a few of them. because because you're uh, you're you're a uh, scurrilous human being, I guess, you know. Whatever you oh, want to say. What do you What do you think, Patrick? I mean, do, do you believe? I don't believe in recalls because I just go, "Hey, live with him. He'll be gone in four years if you don't well, want him." Right? We We had it here in Wisconsin. A uh, Governor Walker was elected mm -hmm. in 2010, and they immediately the uh, Democrat immediately tried to uh, do a recall, and they were successful at getting a recall election. And he he won. Well, he, you he, may remember. I think when that was going on, I even said at that time <laughs> that I was against that recall. I will and give you this, Alex. You are consistent. You were consistent on. I remember hearing you on the Sirius XM yeah. uh, when I was yeah. doing my other job as a bus driver, listening to you in my car making that argument with Christina or whatever her name was. I just don't like the idea of recalls. I just you think, are consistent. Yeah, I I just think that it's it's buyer's remorse and it's a way of trying to sty. Put a put a, a bullet in the foot of a of a of a person trying to run the state, you know. We just have a respectable disagreement on this notion. Well, yeah, but you don't like the guy. Hey, four years, you can get you can work to get him out of office. Yeah, why didn't or why her. weren't they there for the vote? What? Why weren't they there for the vote? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, they are there now. For I mean, the, didn't Newsom? Did, I tell me if I'm right or wrong. Didn't Newsom win the election by a pretty good, um, a fair amount hmm. when he ran for governor? I don't remember. Anybody remember? How about uh, Kevin? You're not yeah, on your he head did. yet. He did. It was a pretty good amount because uh, I forgot the Republican's name. Yeah. Uh, John Cox. Yeah, John Cox. He 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 didn't have but a. Barely a double-digit percentage. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's just—I it, uh, don't know. I, I just—I uh, I just feel that uh, that's wrong. But it seems like the Republicans everywhere are trying to stifle uh, the democracy, and I—I I don't understand it. What do they hope to gain out of it? You know. I mean, they're only becoming or getting a reputation of of, of being non uh, 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 non democratic. 
of trying to do away with democratic principles. You know, how do you feel about Gal Gavin Newsom, Schmoody? Um, I have no issues with him at all. As a matter of fact, I was happy that he vetoed the critical race theory being um, having to take that to graduate because when I was working in the Tracy, Tracy Unified School District, I was a paraeducator for special ed and that whole critical race theory, I mean, is a fucking what, what, nightmare. What's critical race theory? Oh my God. It's where they're, it's, they're supposedly teaching history, but they're going around asking the kids, there's a lawsuit out of Nevada so what they do is they ask the kids, what's what's your race? What's your sexual identity? What's your religion? And what's your disability? And then if you're white, you're an oppressor. Mm -hmm. And any other race is oppressed. And there's a lawsuit out of Nevada because there was a kid in a charter school who's biracial. So he's half black, half white. But oh um, he's light skinned with green eyes. And um, he refused to answer the questions. And the teacher flunked him. And so they're suing the district for compelled speech. So they're suing the um, school and a bunch of other people within the school district. It's a charter school actually that's um, domiciled out of New York. Uh, his uh, First Amendment and his 14th Amendment rights were violated. Um, there's another lawsuit. There was a you know, in class, and luckily the parent saw what's going yeah. on, and so yeah. the teacher puts up a picture of a white gal and a black gal, and she asks this kid, what do you see there? And he goes, I see two people chilling, and the teacher just about came unglued and went and was trying to get this kid to, to say the race, and the kid goes, what do you want to, what do you want me to say? That, that there's race, and the teacher goes, yeah, and he goes, well, I don't see that. All I see are two people chilling. <laughs> I mean, an yeah. absolute, all hell's breaking loose. And my thing is, you know, if you're going to divide kids up by race and sexual identity and this and that, I mean, what the fuck? Martin Luther King Jr. must be rolling in mm -hmm. his grave because what was his ultimate goal? And really, all of our ultimate goal is to judge a person by their character, their moral character. Don't judge a person by their race, by their sexual identity, by their religion. Mm -hmm. None of that or by their disability, but critical race theory, all it is, is judging. Wow. We just have John Larkin joining us, and that brings our amount of people here to what? 16, maybe? No. 14 plus you. F well, 14 plus me, so 15. Okay. New record. Yeah. Well, it's not a new record. Well, it oh, is Third actually... off? Top off? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let's do the wave. Top off and, uh, and, and Jill in the background, too. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. That one I had to go and play back because I was listening to it, and Patrick was talking the night after that somebody was naked or was getting undressed on the show. I can't hear you. And then I went yeah. back. I went back and it was Jeffrey's wife. I, I, I think the, I, I think this is a record. I remember that? Right? This, I think this I is a, that, yeah. this is a record because we couldn't do this many on Skype and not have it crash. If you oh, may really? remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't get this many. I, I can get up to fifty people here, although we'd have oh. to be changing the screen over and over again and things like that. I remember 16 once where we had four rows of four. Really? Were we doing that on Skype? No, you, this was on uh, on Zoom. Zoom. Oh, on Zoom? Well, oh, okay. All we need is one more person. No, <clears> all we that. need, if, if anybody out there wants to be the one more person, give Come us a on, call. Come on, big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Yeah, money. <laughs> You just go, you just go over to to gabnet.net and it says Zoom here and you click there and it'll take you to it'll ring us here Zoom us here and maybe we can get one more person and hold a record. Yes, John Larkin. So um, that recall thing that's going on in California, it's it's mainly money backed by uh, Trump supporters, and the 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 notion is if if the guy that behind it gets in. Um, that, that the, 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 they're they're saying that Feinstein is going to retire 
or or you know die maybe and mm -hmm. and, and then they would be able to appoint a republican senator appoint a republican that so that's 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 the plan oh boy yeah uh, God. this country is so but fucked the polls up. the polls show uh Newsom winning anyway whoever they put in the polls are showing that he would win so. yeah but you got to get those democrats to turn out because true, yeah. they don't have a reason to turn out because they're not voting for somebody. They're voting to make sure somebody stays in office. You know, it's, yeah. it's going to be a lot easier to get the, the Republicans out in mass because they all want Caitlyn Jenner as governor. You know, so. <laughs> that'd be scary. You uh, know who should run for governor I, I, is that, uh, the, the lady that was the congresswoman yeah. that got outed with the sex video by her ex-husband. Oh, she was, yeah. She's Hill. a good politician. Katie Hill, I think her name yeah. is. She should yeah. run for governor. I but, think she'd win. By the way, Scott, we haven't heard anything from you tonight oh. for the most part. It's been quiet. Now, the only thing I was going to contribute is in Ohio, the yeah. state legislator right now is debating whether to expand the obstruction of justice law, mm -hmm. actually by making it more vague. So a police officer can arrest somebody for filming. What's going on? Oh, Ridiculous. Oh, oh. They say it's obstruction of justice. Eh, I don't buy it. Uh, well, of course you don't buy it, but that doesn't mean they're not going to pass the law. You know. uh, well, but federal law trumps it. Federal law, the, you know, the, the yeah. First Amendment. Sam, thing. you're you're there, right? You're you're in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. I I have to say I don't pay too much attention to what goes on in Ohio politics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I hadn't heard about that one. Yeah, we'll see, I guess. Ohio politics is an oxymoron, I imagine, <laughs> is what you're, what you're saying. Well, you know, we certainly have a lot of stuff going on right now that is not terribly pleasant. All I know is I've got a wife who sits there watching the news every night and keeps yelling at me, this country's going to... To go into hell in a handbasket. Hell in a handbasket, you know. Yep. It's falling apart. It's getting terrible. You know, and uh, I don't know. I mean, when I see all this stuff going on, I mean, isn't the idea of people who get into public office, the job is to do the best for the American public. Yes, absolutely. You know, and not to fight between each other, you know. And I, I you know, while I don't think that the Democrats are quite the naysayers that the Republicans are right now, uh, they certainly do their share of naysaying. You know, and and of trying to uh, uh, drive the Republicans crazy. So I don't know. I I, I who knows what we're what's going to happen. But uh, that's. Uh, I just want to see Tony's comic book collection. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll one night we'll have him show you the comic book collection. Yeah. I'll show you. And there there, there, is, there, there, there is an estate sale today. <laughs> And they had a whole box of National Lampoon. Ooh. Oh, really? I have every National Ooh. Lampoon was uh, that was published. Oh, really? from, from nice. The, the thick from, books also. 1975, they had those double books or the thick, oh. thick books and I, 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 in my, my uh, uh, storage locker in California, I have the first something like 40 issues wow. including wow. one issue one issue that was never released with abby hoffman on the cover Why because tell us where that's at because we'll yeah i was just thinking the same thing <laughs> it, it, we'll go check on it for you the, it, but no what happened was is that the uh, abby hoffman cover never got released because it was released for about a day but then the place where they were distributing them from burned to the ground oh and that I issue very limited very limited wow. in availability. Wow. Anyway, hey, where, listen. Where, where, uh, let's play two. Huh? Let's play two. Yeah, just go ask Damien. It's his storage locker he runs, okay? Anyway, Jeff, thank you. Thank you to Alan. Thank you to Charlie. Thank you to Josh. Uh, thank you to Schmoody, as always. Uh, Scott and the Scott Boddicker look alike. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here tonight. Uh, Kevin, always good to have you here. Uh, the lovely and attractive Brian Neary, thank you. Uh, thank you to, uh, to um, Tony. Thank you to Brian, the other Brian, Brian Ludwig. Thank you, Patrick. It's so good to see you here. It just makes me feel warm in my heart. Uh, 
<laughs> Sam, come see us again. Well, you don't make it four years again the next time. Uh, Trucker Steve will probably see you next week. As, uh, hopefully we'll see John Larkin as well. Uh, I think all of you should probably give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back, okay? And there they go, ladies and gentlemen, a very large citizens panel. That's it for now. I'm out of here, okay? Uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same GabNet. Uh, he'll be uh, taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Meanwhile, I'll see you again on Monday at 4 o'clock with the pop-up show and then right back here again next Tuesday night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there, wear a mask, and get a vaccination. Okay? Bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>